Today, I became the owner of a broken microwave, and while most people would probably throw this away, I decided, let's take it apart and figure out how it works. But first, a quick disclaimer. Microwave components have been known to claim lives. Microwaves contain many high voltage components and can be deadly if not properly handled. I am not responsible if you try this at home. The microwave isn't super old or something, it's just not working, there's an issue with the circuit. Other than that, it's brand new. So to take it apart, we'll start with a screwdriver, and our motto, like Grant Thompson would say, would be, see a screw, remove a screw. Our first task is going to be taking off this main cover, and there are two screws on the sides which we'll take off first. Once that's finished, we'll rotate the microwave and remove the screws on the back. Perhaps a testament to why you shouldn't take apart the microwave, they use different screws all over the body so that way you can't remove it with just one screwdriver. Once we do remove those screws though, then we can start by taking off this panel. With the cover taken off, we can now see all the glorious components that make the microwave work. This is also the time we need to start being careful, because these high voltage components, if not discharged, could carry a lot of charge. By keeping one hand behind my back and using an insulated screwdriver, I can go ahead and short any terminals I can see, and unplug any high voltage wires. To remove this high voltage unit, we'll start by removing the tabs on all the sides. The last thing holding this in is the plastic tabs on the bottom, which can be popped out of place. The last thing I have to do is pop out this screw, and then using only one hand I'm able to pull out the unit. Being mindful of where my hands are, I use some pliers to unplug all the wires. With our high voltage unit removed, we can take off the cover and look at how it works. We can see these orange things are called capacitors and they store charge. There are a lot of other components here and I don't really know what they do, although I can tell you that this big wiry thing is called a high voltage transformer, which is responsible for turning the low voltage in your wall into a really high voltage into the magnetron, which is this part. To remove that, we'll just undo all the screws surrounding it. I'll remove this plastic shroud and then I'll continue the takedown. I'll unplug these wires since they're just in the way. And while we're at it, we might as well tear out all these wires to get them out of our way. And would you look at that, I already cut myself. These microwave components can be sharp, so be careful. And since we're on a wire pulling spree, we might as well pull out these wires and the board they're connected to. I'll remove this main power cord, which can be used for a lot of other projects. Alright, back to the magnetron. You can see there are a couple screws holding it down, so we'll undo those. In order to access the other magnetron screws, we'll pull out this fan unit, which is held on by a few tabs. This motor runs on AC power, but could still be useful for some cool projects. I also found this cool piezoelectric sensor, I'm not sure what it does. Next, we'll remove the screw that's holding on this shroud. We can now remove the last two screws holding the magnetron on. The magnetron is a pretty cool piece of technology and it's responsible for creating the microwaves that heat your food up. It's my understanding that this shroud acts like a periscope bouncing the microwaves into the microwave. I think that these divots on the top and bottom disperse the waves. Next, I think I'll move on to the main board, and we'll remove all the screws that are holding it in place. Here's the latching mechanism that keeps the door closed. It also tells the microwave not to activate until it's closed. Those screws removed, I can take out the main board. This is the LED light that lights up the inside of the microwave. I'll grab that real quick. With that side of the microwave already gutted, let's rotate it and take out the few parts that are left on the other side. Only one screw holding this little guy on, and I actually don't know what it does. Let me know in the comments if you do. If you look closely, you can see the last part we have left is the turntable motor. 
We'll flip the microwave on its underside and we'll remove these tabs that are holding on this little window. There's just one screw holding this turntable motor on, so we'll remove that real quick. After we pop out that screw, it comes right out. Unfortunately, it's a 120 volt AC motor though. And with that, our microwave has been completely gutted and is as good as a hunk of metal. I'm coming back to this little board here and removing all the screws that keep it in. As you can see, there's some cool components, including this screen, which could be used for other fun projects. <laughs> I'll remove this touchpad board, which gives us some nice buttons we can use in a project. Well, I hope you've learned something, and if you recreated this yourself, now you've got a whole slew of components for your projects. As an added bonus, you can put all the decorative parts back in the microwave, and no one will ever know that you took the parts out of it until they try to turn it on. You could donate this to your local Goodwill and make somebody really mad. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, and check out some of my others. I'll see you in the next video.